and welcome back to Epic Arms. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Sig Cross. So the Sig Cross came out in 2020, and it's been an awesome rifle since then. It really combines all the aspects that you typically desire out of a modern sporting rifle, and really integrate that into a hunting rifle by making this thing 6.6 .6 pounds, which is freaking incredible. The weight of this rifle really competes quite nicely with the ultralight hunting rifles that we typically see in the market right now. So having the modern sporter feel is very much a new thing. Even right now, there aren't a ton of options that are, you know, at bolt action hunting rifles that are ultra light. At this point, the competition for this rifle is like the Q-Fix, which is like double the price. And in Canada, there's the TRX Bronco. So it's pretty much unrivaled. So this one retails for $1,600 US or about $2,300 Canadian. Now you can get it chambered in 308 Winchester, 277 Fury, or 6.5 Creedmoor, which is what this one's chambered in. So why might you choose the Sig Cross? Well, let's start with the back and work our way to the front. We have an adjustable length of pull, and all the adjustments on this are nice and quickly adjustable. So quick length of pull adjustment, we have vertical adjustment on the back, comb height adjustment, we have a folding stock, we have an M4 style grip, safety selector, very much like you see on an AR-15, takes AICS magazines that have the uh, magazine release in the trigger guard. It's got M locks all over the front of this so you can put over whatever attachments you want. It's got a 60 degree bolt throw and it has a Picatinny rail right on it. So right there is like a ton of desirable features that you really don't see. Well, especially all these features on hunting rifles. So starting with the most important part is our sponsor. So the sponsor for this video is cdnprecision.com, which is me, it's my website. If you're looking for hunting carbon fiber tripods, the T2830 is probably my best recommendation. They're extremely lightweight. So if you're hunting in tall grass, these are gonna be perfect for you. Alternatively, if you need something a little bit beefier, you need to do maybe some spotting with it too, check out the T3240 CSL by Sunway Photo and you can find them at cdnprecision.com and you can support the channel that way. So the most important part of any rifle review is going to be the accuracy and this one really, really surprised me. I haven't seen many rifles succeed this well, especially hunting rifles. So the average over 12 different brands of match ammunition was 1.14 inches. Now that is incredible. Uh, five of them were below one inch and the very best was 0.4 inches, which is freaking incredible. So let's start with the worst and working our way to the best. Now keep in mind, all of these groups are done at 100 meters. So it's like roughly hundred yards. So Hornady match, 120 grain. This is 1.71 inches. Federal premium gold medal Sierra match king, 140 grain. 1.68 inches. Barnes Precision Match, 140 grain. OTMBT, 1.59 inches. Federal Hornady VMAX, 95 grain, 1.56. I mean, realistically, I should not have included that one just because it has never done well on any of my 6.5 Creedmoor rifles, whether they're expensive, whether they're cheap, whether they're heavy precision rifles, it does not matter. I have found none of them that like the 95 grain VMAXs. Next, Federal Terminal Ascent, 130 grain, 1.26 inches. But then again, all these groups, even so far, even working with our worst, are still perfectly sufficient for um, Eastern hunting. Like typically in our area, you're never really gonna shoot more than 100 yards at best. Next, the Barnes Vortex, 120 grain, TTS XBT, 1.12. Federal Premium Gold Medal Burger, 130 grain, OTMs, 1.12 inches. Barnes Vortex LR, 127 grain, LRX BT, 0.97. So this is our first group that's sub-MOA, and every group following this one is going to be sub-MOA and better than this one. The Nosler, 140 grain, hollow point boat tail, 0.87. I mean, now we're starting to look pretty damn good. Federal Premium Burger Hybrid Hunter, 135 grain, 0.75 MOA. Seiko TRG, 136 grain, 0.75 MOA. Now that's pretty darn good. So far the Seiko TRG 136 grains have performed well in all of my 6.5 Creedmoor rifles, which is why they're usually sold out. And lastly, which is our very best, is the Hornady Match 147 grain ELDM, 0.4 inches at 100 meters. Then again, at this price, it's pretty much our expectations for accuracy. But keep in mind, like this rifle does have some imperfections, but when you factor in all the things that it has, even at, even at this price, because $2,300 Canadian is not a cheap rifle and $1,600 US, well, it's not a cheap rifle, but it's also not a super expensive rifle either. So 
at that price, there are going to be some pluses and some minuses that you kind of have to factor in. But accuracy is not one thing it's sacrificing. So next is the barreled action. So this rifle, this action, this, this frame has a lot more in common with an AR-15 because they use a much more similar barrel extension than they do in a traditional hunting rifle. So it's quite interesting that they did that and they made it work so darn well. Also, this has a 60 degree bolt throw with an oversized knob, which makes it really quick and convenient for cycling rounds in and out. Now, what you're worried about is, you know, reliability. How reliable is it for feeding, ejection, and extraction? This one was 100% reliable. We didn't have any light primer strikes, any weak extraction, any weak ejection, anything of the sort. This thing was a Hank, and it did not disappoint. Also, the bolt itself is a two-piece bolt design, which if you wanted to get to the bolt, which I guess we're kind of gonna bridge onto the stock just for a quick moment, you gotta basically fold the stock. My first kind of complaint about this is that the folding stock mechanism is a little bit annoying. It's not quite as intuitive as the other ones. You simply press the button here and you lift up this stock and fold it. And now you'll, well, if you don't fold it all the way, You'll be able to pull the bolt back. You press this right on the back here and you can slide it out. That's how you typically take out the bolt. But other than that, clipping the rear stock back into place is pretty easy. One thing I did notice when I did get this rifle is that the screws into the, uh, into the action itself were loose right away when I got it. So it's one thing to, if you buy it, torque all your screws down, probably with blue Loctite. The action does have a zero MOA rail right integrated from the factory, which is quite nice because whether they're cheap or whether they're expensive, a lot of rifles don't come with any rails whatsoever, or they come with a very cheap two-piece rail system. But this comes with a nice one-piece section, which works out great. Also, the barrel is either a 16-inch or an 18-inch barrel, and the 6.5 Creedmoor is a 1 and 8-inch twist. So we did the 100-meter groups. Let's do a little bit of long-range shooting. So, there's a lot of good reasons to go with a scope rangefinder combo just like this. For one thing, all you got to do is range find, adjust for your wind, lock and load, baby. You got a little illuminated dot inside of your reticle, which is what you got to hold based off of. It's as simple as that, it's nice and easy. Simple as that. So that was pretty awesome. So using the SIG Sierra 6 BDX with the their Kilo BDX range finding system is freaking fantastic. I can't really think of a better system uh, that works so well together as you range find your target, a little illuminated dot uh, is illuminated in your reticle and you just hold on that point and pull the trigger. It's literally that simple and it works really, really well. And if you guys are wondering, this is a 3 to 18 power scope, which is literally about the same size as a large 3 to 9 power scope, which when I got in the mail, I was like, ah, they sent me the wrong scope. But actually, no, this is 3 to 18. And then, next, let's talk about the trigger. So this is probably one of the downsides to this rifle and probably one of the things I have the most criticism for. So at $2,300 Canadian, my expectations for a hunting rifle are like perfection. But when it comes to something like this that has so many like really awesome things that you don't see on like almost any hunting rifle, it's like, I guess some things might be sacrificed and maybe one of those things is the trigger. So they call this a two stage match trigger. Now, unfortunately, what I've observed, the first stage, well, I mean, it can weigh anywhere between four and two pounds, which is great. Typically, you're gonna wanna set it to the lightest weight. Otherwise, if you have your second stage maybe at like three pounds and your first stage is at like four pounds, you're gonna pull the trigger, it's gonna go off at some point. You're not gonna feel that stop and break, which is what you're gonna notice. Like this right now, it's cocked. I pull the trigger, it stops. And if I have the safety off, and then it breaks. So typically you're gonna set that first stage to the lightest and that second stage to wherever you feel comfortable with it. What was weird is wherever I sent that second stage, there was a lot of creep on almost every weight except for one. I think I have it right now at around three pounds, which is where there's the least amount of creep.
while I think, you know, SIG is really good at building rifles, they might not be the best experts at building triggers. And also, uh, adjusting the first stage is quite easy. There's this little peephole here in the trigger guard. But adjusting the second stage, you kind of have to insert a uh, Torx uh, wrench kind of on an angle and kind of jimmy until it's, it's kind of the right place. So not really super convenient. You can do it, but it's just not ideal. Also, they do have a longer trigger in this, which is going to be great. It's good that even the trigger guard's rather beefy, so you can even fit your hand in with gloves. So they really thought of a ton of things, but just the perfect trigger, just don't think the cross rifle has it. Oh, and the lowest breaking weight I could record for this trigger was 1.25 pounds, so pretty darn decent. Next, let's talk about the stock. So there's a lot to talk about on this, but let's get to it. So starting with the back, we have our vertical adjustment. So it's very easily vertically adjustable. So you simply press this button here, up, down, wherever you want it to be, and it's just you release that button and it's where it stays. It does have, I guess, a little bit of play, but it doesn't really make noise, so it's not really a complaint. Next, if you want to adjust the length of pull, which this goes this way, yes. You simply loosen this screw. Lengthen it, shorten it, whatever you want, and you screw it back into place and you're done. Nice and simple. And with the comb height adjustment here, you press this button here right above this little lever that you see there, and you pop down the lever, and you're gonna notice the comb height adjustment popped up. You're gonna put your cheek on it until it's at the perfect spot, and you're gonna bring that lever right back up, and it's gonna clip into place. Now it's everything is locked in. So this is all super nice. I really like the fact that it has so much adjustment. It's all, you can do it all in the field, which is really nice. But what I'm seeing is there's a lot of screws like everywhere on the back of this. And my, my first in instinct is it's a lot of screws that could get loose, especially if I noticed, let me open this one back up. If I noticed right away when I, when I got this rifle is that this one here was loose. What else could be loose? Then again, if you know, you know, after you buy a Loctite, everything in place, I think you'll be good to go, but still. Yeah, obviously next is the uh, the pivot here for the folding stock. You gotta press the button and you have to lift up the rear portion of the stock, which I don't think it's super intuitive. It took me a few times to like figure it out. So, I mean, there's a lot of other folding stock systems out of the market from other companies, which I find are so much more intuitive. They're so much easier to use. But anyway, this, this one does work. It's just maybe not the best compared to all the rest. Now, working our way to, well, a slight, an inch further is it takes a M4 style pistol grip, which is awesome. You can put whatever style pistol grip you want on this. Personally, I would just leave it with whatever it has here. This is a Sig Sauer M4 grip, super comfortable, no complaints whatsoever. Next, we have the uh, safety selector. So if we cock it into place here, I'm just gonna move the selector on the opposite side so you guys can see. You're gonna notice that isn't quite into the full safety area. While it is fully safety, because I can't press the trigger, uh, it's not fully locked into place like I just did right there. So it does kind of stop before the full uh, safety, which is kind of odd. I'm not exactly sure why it does that, but it doesn't seem to make it unsafe by any means. Moving forward, we have our magazine release, which will drop your AICS magazines freely, which is quite nice. It's integrated into the trigger guard, which, you know, unlike an AR-15, which is on the outside, they integrate in the trigger guard, so it would be harder to bump and to drop your magazine. Also, it does take MDT uh, AICS magazines, but they make a little bit of noise, so you probably won't be using those if you're going hunting. You're probably gonna use the mag it came with, is like, which is like a Magpul mag, which is actually, yeah, a Magpul mag. I've tried it with other Magpul mags and it works great, so don't worry about it, it's gonna work fine. So moving towards the front, we have a free floating handguard here. You're gonna notice it has some panels on the side here which are rubber. Uh, I guess it's gonna help a little in if it's cold. You're not gonna have your hands directly on the aluminum handguard. It could be a little colder. You might, you're probably gonna notice that I put an ARC adapter on the M-Lock slots there. This way I can go into the field, I can shoot from a elevated position, I can shoot from basically any position. And the fact that it has M-Locks all over it, you can put whatever you want. But if you're looking for awesome carbon fiber tripods, check out the Sunway Photo carbon fiber tripods. Whether you're looking for a super heavy one, potentially like the T4040CSs, those ones are massive and beastly. Not what I'd use for hunting, but if you want an all-purpose hunting rifle, the T3240CSL are probably my best recommendation, or the T2830CSs. Those are super light. They may not be made for spotting, but for shooting off of, they are perfect. 
Next and lastly, which actually I want a little bit of your feedback on. So if you ever used a Sig Sauer's warranty, I want to know how good is it, but especially in Canada, because for US clients, they have a section that literally explains it for you guys. But for Canada, I haven't found any documentation or, or any information as to what they do, what they don't do. So for USA, Sig Sauer warrants that the enclosed farm was originally manufactured free of defects in material, workmanship, and mechanical function for the lifetime of the original purchaser. So lifetime warranty for original purchaser only, that's great. Uh, Sig Sauer agrees to correct any defects in the firearm for the original purchaser for repair, adjustment, replacement. Now, they do have some stipulations, so no reloads. So don't admit to reloads. And the unauthorized repair or alterations. So kind of a no-no on that, including cosmetic, but not including Cerakote if applied correctly. Overall, I'm still loving this rifle. I'm still very, very pleased with this rifle, regardless that it has a minor detail with the folding stock, regardless that the trigger isn't like a trigger tech, for example. I think overall, this is a sweet package. You can't go wrong with this package. It is freaking awesome. An ultra lightweight foldable hunting rifle. I mean, this, this is where it's at. <laughs> so that's my thoughts on the SIG Cross. This is a fantastic hunting rifle slash precision rifle. So guys, thanks for watching Epic Arms. If you guys want to support the channel, you consider heading on over to cdnprecision.com for your optics and your shooting tripod needs.